Sorry, guys. A couple of weeks ago in video number 1274, I picked uh, nine number three uh, master locks and one master lock model 140 in under two minutes. And, you know, those are not that big of a challenge. So somebody wrote in and said, Bill, what you need is a master lock that's rated 10. One of their 10 master locks. And they even gave me the model number. This is it. I bought this through uh, Amazon. Just came in today. The M930 XKA DLH. I have no idea what all that stuff means. The Master Lock Magnum. And here it is. It is a 10, or at least a Master Lock 10. And I, I think that means in all of these areas. So a 10 in maximum pick resistance, a 10 in cut resistance. And that part, I actually believe that part. These really are very tough locks. So you got to give them credit in their metallurgy. Uh, weather resistance, we'll take a look at that in a minute, and it's solid steel. So the solid steel and the cut resistance, I think those kind of go together. Uh, I've tried cutting these before. These are borine carbon, and they're not lying. That really is some very, very tough stuff. You can't cut them with croppers, and it's really difficult to cut these shackles uh, with a hacksaw. Uh, die grinder, you know, someone's going to jump in and say, how about a die grinder? And yes, like any other lock, even a lock that costs a million dollars if there was such a thing, you know, metal's metal, guys. We don't have any alien tech, so these manufacturers are limited to what's, you know, what's uh, available out there. Yes, you can cut metal with a die grinder very, very quickly. So, you know, in that regard, you can probably get through this in just uh, under 10 or 12 seconds, probably. But anyway, master lock. Um, let's look at the weather resistance because that's something they talk about. This is actually a copy of the 930. Um, this is fairly new. It's only been out a few years, this rubber doodad that they kind of put on here. There's a, I'm not going to pull it off right now. I'll pull it off if we get around to picking it and, and gutting it. But when you peel this off, there's a little clip here, and I think there's one on each side. And once you tear this off, it's dang near impossible to get it back on. So I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, on this cover, it's kind of a compression fit. There's a little circle here, a little raised ridge that's supposed to squeeze down in there. And it's not real easy to get to stay. Uh, it doesn't like to sit flush. You really got to be focused. So I can't imagine when you, somebody's putting this on their door, they're going to spend a lot of time doing that. But it is available. And I guess if you can get it sealed, that one's almost sealed, uh, then it will protect it. Now we get down to the pick resistance, maximum pick resistance. Um, it's probably a little tougher than number threes because it's a five pin lock. And, and I think I got really lucky on this one. This is exactly the kind of bidding you'd be looking for if you were trying to make a challenge lock. You want to put some very low cut ones and these first two are what I call gatekeepers or guards. They're very, cut very low and then there's a medium cut one. Then there's another one cut to the maximum depth and then one that's what I believe is probably the, the maximum height. So in order to pick him, you got to not overset those three really low cut ones. So this is exactly what we'd be looking for. Um, it does work beautifully. It is a ball bearing lock, so you're not going to be shimming this bad boy. Even if you could, this uh, sh the shape of this shackle makes it difficult to get a shim inside of there once it's in. So shimming is out. It's not, you're not going to be doing it. Uh, it is not key retaining, by the way. It doesn't really matter, though. Anyway, let's see what we got out of this thing. Let me move this out of the way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to hold this one in my hand, I think. Let's go ahead and use the top of the keyway. Let me find the right tensioner here. I can't mark this because I don't think even you'd be able to see it. So we just gotta keep, keep an eye on it. There. I'm gonna zoom in though. I think I'm gonna hold it and just pr uh, tension it with my thumb like that. Let me zoom in. It's a nice wide open, typical of master lock keyway. So I don't have to use a 15,000th. I can use this guy. This is from the Sparrows. This is a Sparrows worm. Uh, and it's in 25,000. There's plenty of room to, to drive him in there. All right. All the way in, just light tension, and like any other lock, just start raking. So maybe we can rake up a fault set on this guy, and then I can grab a pick and we can finish him off. Come on. <laughs> okay, we're not going to need to finish him off. He is open. <laughs> I did not expect that. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, master lock 10. Yeah. Okay, so this is like a, if it was Abus or Schlage or Abloy, this would be like a minus three. Anyway, we got it 
open, um, let's go ahead and take them apart, I guess. Um, there's a drain hole here, by the way, so that is pretty well thought out. And if you look down in there, you can just barely see, put a light there. You can just barely see that light coming through there, so it, it is real. I found a few of them where the drain hole doesn't actually drain. This one, this one seems to. Right, let's see what we got here. I am going to have to uh, take that cover off. Of it. Well, there's the retaining pin, so the, there should be a clip. I think it's on this side. There he is, right there. And let's pull it all the way out. So we got a little dovetail right here, and the, this part is dovetailed, so we can slide them up in there. The hard part is getting these little, set this down, is getting these little clips back in there. Uh, once you take it off, it never really goes back right. All right, so nothing up in there we need to worry about. Let's move all this stuff out of the way. Let's get a pin and tray in here and see what Master Lock puts in their best in their highest rated locks. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna lock him back up. Let's go ahead and pop that clip off. Grab that key. And find a follower that isn't all beat up. Around here, that's kinda hard. Turn him like that. And that ought to be about right. All right, there's one reason that it's not that difficult. There's another pin there. They could have easily pinned that up, but for some reason they didn't. Just like all the other five pin locks we've seen from Master Lock. All right, notice how these, well, let's go ahead and dump the pins and then we'll take a look at the core. We got a standard, we got a standard, we got a standard. Don't tell me they put all standards in their number 10 and a 10 rated. Yes, they did. A lot of beveling on the top of here. That introduces a little bit of slop into the lock. You know, this number six is not bevel, so they never intended. It wouldn't have taken any effort at all, guys. One extra machine. It's all automated, right? Hopefully. Well, maybe not. All right, let's see what we got. We have a standard. Unbelievable. We have another standard. We have another standard. <laughs> and you wonder why this is so easy to rake open. My goodness. And the last one. Another standard. And you guys have seen these springs before. How disappointing is that? I can't believe Master Lock would even bother rating something and then pinning them up like this. This is... I hate to use the word pathetic, but that's an accurate descriptor here, guys. There's nothing in here. They cut so many corners on this thing. You could have easily put another six, the six pin in there, and you could have easily thrown in a few security pins. Unbelievable. I'm going to pin this back up. I'm going to do a little magic on the core, and somebody is going to get this as a challenge lock. Anyway, anyway, guys, that... I don't know what to tell you what to think about a master lock rated number 10. It's not nothing... Nothing you want to bother with. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal, and as always, stay away from Master Lock. Jeez.